Hi, we're here at Broadband World Forum and I'm speaking to Mansour Hanif, who's the Director of Radio Access Networks at EE. Hi Mansour. Morning. So Mansour, tell me, is 5G something EE is actively involved in? Yes, indeed. Uh, we're very much involved in 4G, as you know, mm -hmm. but we're already looking ahead to 5G to see what we can bring forward here in the UK mm -hmm. uh, as soon as it makes sense to do so. And obviously you're involved in the University of Surrey's uh, 5G IC project. Can you tell us about the work you're doing there and when we might see some of the results of that work? Yeah, exactly. The 5G IC is the principal conduit in which we're investigating uh, 5G capabilities. Mm -hmm. We were the Platinum founders together with uh, several other partners. We're very pleased to, to, to be uh, one of the founding members. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, we've helped the 5G IC to get up and running. So they've just recently set up their equipment. We've helped them with a little bit with the spectrum that's required um, to do the testing there. So over the next, I would say, two to three years, we'll be expecting them to be experimenting in a lot of 5G use cases. Um, in terms of what will be coming out to the public, it really depends on what those use cases give to a, a normal user today. And what's really clear for us is that we won't be waiting for 5G itself to come forward uh, to, to implement those use cases. If there's any way we can do them earlier, we will try and do them over 4G as well. Sure, sure. And what would you say is the most important consideration for operators, especially in the UK, to take on board uh, when planning for 5G networks? Well, I think the, the big issue at the moment is the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So uh, because the spectrum conferences, there's one uh, this year, there's one uh, in 2019. Um, the actual spectrum bands are unlikely to be fixed until then. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of um, a little bit of uh, risk involved if you want to go ahead a bit faster than that. So I think apart from the spectrum solution, pretty much everything else is something that we can already start to, to look to implement gradually before 4G. Sure. So given the fact that we're not quite sure what 5G will actually look like yet, how do operators such as EE approach the challenge of planning for that? I think we know what it looks like now. Okay. I think six months ago perhaps it was still a bit vague, mm -hmm. but from my point of view the overall network architecture is very, very clear. Mm -hmm. Um, and it needs to be very flexible, it needs to be very uh, high performance, very reliable and very open. It needs to be based on open networking standards and virtualized, so we're very clear on that. I think the only piece that's missing really for me is the spectrum, so mm. it's actually quite good to have the visibility now because what it means is that we can already start you know, moving towards that architecture now, mm. gradually, over 4G, and then once the spectrum is decided, then we can just put a bit more muscle into the, into the architecture once, the, once the, the 5G spectrum is decided. So. It, it seems to me that 5G is sort of painted as this holy grail of the telecom industry that's going to solve all these problems. Do you think it's been overhyped at all, or perhaps the industry is getting a little hell of itself? I think, yes. I think it is indeed. I mean, we, you know, as I said, we are very keen to uh, investigate now into the 5G capabilities. But we know that the full 5G spectrum, etc., is only going to be rolled out next decade. Mm -hmm. uh, it might come a little bit earlier in some countries. So I think the term 5G itself is overhyped. I think the concept of having a network which is ahead of customer expectation, which is highly reliable everywhere, which has really low latency, which, is, um, which gives customers everything they want, mm -hmm. it's not overhyped. That's a concept that we wholly endorse. I just think that partially we can do some of that over the next three years over uh, LTE Advanced and Mobile Edge Computing and then smoothly trans transition that into 5G with the new spectrum, especially when we go to open networking and network virtualization. So I think the term itself, 5G, is overhyped. The concept is something that is actually becoming a reality, but it's going to be a much more smooth transition from today to the future than what people think. And speaking of LTE, obviously you've invested a lot in your LTE networks to, you know, to get them to where they are today, exactly. So how do you plan to ensure that these investments continue to pay off as we move to 5G? Exactly, I and mean, that's a really good point. So we've still got a long way to go with LTE Advanced. So we've got, uh, now we've got up to 300 meg speeds here in London. Uh, we've got about a thousand sites which are already live commercially on that. But we've still got a few more carriers to come, and we can still refarm some more. And we're also experimenting with mobile edge computing. And we're having a look at our overall architecture to see how we can come to a, a common virtualized architecture over the whole network from the RAN side to the core. So that's, for me, a gradual transition towards 5G. I think the big choice where we'll, we'll be very careful before we invest heavily is in the, in, the, in the small cell space for very high capacity in urban areas we wouldn't be likely to put a lot of um, radio equipment out there unless we're sure that the spectrum is compatible with 5G. So either we get new radio equipment, which is fully tunable, 
and we can easily transition to plans in the future, then we can anticipate or we might hold off a little bit on some of those uh, rollouts. Mm -hmm. It's really a spectrum issue. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. All right, well, Mansoor, thank you very much for talking to us today. You're welcome.